Today we're going to be talking about how plants actually absorb nutrients. And you've probably heard growers talk about how plants are forced fed synthetic nutrients. You've probably also heard them talk about how plants don't know or care if nutrients come from organics or synthetics. Today we're going to break it all down so that you guys can understand exactly how plants observe nutrients. What we're going to be talking about today is the real chemistry, physics, and biology at the root surface. I promise you, in the next few minutes, you'll get a comprehensive understanding of the ways nutrients reach the root and the two ways they cross into the plant. So in this episode, we're going to keep it simple, super practical, and you'll learn how nutrients move through soil or solution via mass flow, diffusion, and root inception, and how they cross into the plant, either through passive or active transport where the plant actually spends energy to take up nutrients and how carbon and chelation change the entire dynamic. By the end, you'll see why some growers get ridiculous efficiency from modest inputs and others are just flushing away money down the drain. So let's dive in. One of the biggest mistakes is thinking that everything that you are giving to the plant is being absorbed or the plant has access to it. Most growers think that if you put X amount of milliliters per gallon into your reservoir, that's what the plant has access to or what the plant will get. So when things look off, we often find ourselves thinking that we need to either up the feed, switch the brand of nutrients, or add another booster. But here's the truth. Plants don't care what's in the bottle. They care what makes it into solution to the root surface, across the root barrier, and into their cells. Every step is a potential choke point. So if you're only thinking about the inputs and not thinking about physics, chemistry, and the biological synergy between the nutrients, carbon, microbes, and the root, you could be wasting money throwing inputs into a black box and hoping for the best. Nutrients move in three main ways, mass flow, diffusion, and root inception. You can think of your root system as being surrounded by a zone of soil or cocoa or water where the nutrients are dissolved from that zone to the root. Mass flow is the easiest one to picture. Every time your plant transpires, every time water evaporates from the leaves, it's pulling water up from the roots like a straw. That water isn't just H2O, it's carrying dissolved nutrients with it. So imagine a river of water moving through the soil towards the roots and whatever nutrients are dissolved in that river comes along for the ride. This is mass flow. It's driven by transpiration and nutrients like nitrate, calcium, magnesium, and potassium ride this river. This means that any nutrients that are moving via mass flow requires transpiration to be uptaken into the plant. If your VPD is wrong, if your plants aren't transpiring, your nutrient river slows down. If your media is cold, compact, or waterlogged, roots struggle and flow slows down. If your media hydrology is either bone dry or constantly oversaturated, you're also messing with mass flow. So when someone says my plants look deficient, oftentimes the first reaction is add more. The real problem might be you don't have a river, you have a swamp. Fixing your environmental parameters, your watering parameters, and any issues that could slow down transpiration can improve mass flow and nutrient uptake. The second way that plants observe nutrients is through diffusion. Think of diffusion as a crowded room. One corner of the room is packed with people, another corner is nearly empty. Over time, people naturally drift from the crowded side to the empty side. Nutrient ions do the same thing. If there is a high concentration of, say, phosphorus a little bit away from the root and a lower concentration right at the root surface where the plant is sucking it up, P will slowly drift and diffuse toward the root to even out that difference. This is a huge deal for nutrients like phosphorus and many micronutrients. There are three main factors that can affect diffusion, and they are moisture, too dry and diffusion almost completely stops, temperature, like cold, which slows down everything, and soil structure. If water films can't form and connect, ions can't move easily. You can have plenty of phosphorus in your soil solution, but if diffusion is slow, the plant can't access it and it can become deficient. The third pathway is called root inception. It's pretty simple. 
As roots and root hairs grow through the media, they literally bump into nutrient ions. The more your root system explores, the more it intercepts and uptakes nutrients. Then if you add mycorrhizal to the mix, it changes everything. Mycorrhizal fungus will attach to roots and send out extremely fine filaments called hyphae into the soil. They explore far more volume than roots alone. They're incredibly important for things like phosphorus and micronutrient acquisition. So your root system isn't just what you see when you pull the roots out of the pot. It's roots plus fungal networks all intercepting nutrients out of the soil. So now that we've gone over the three main ways nutrients move through soil to the root surface, we'll move on to how they cross into the plant cells. You can picture the root like a city with walls and checkpoints. To get past customs to the inner city, the xylem, ions have to go through cell membranes. And there are two main ways this is done, through passive transport and active transport. Passive transport is like rolling downhill. If it is easier for an ion to be inside of the cell than the outside based off of charge and concentration, it can move through specific channels or carriers without the plant having to use energy. This includes things like ion channels for potassium or water and nutrients moving through aquaporins, which are small water channels. Passive transport only works with the natural gradient. But plants don't want the same nutrient concentrations inside the cell wall as outside. They want to control it. They want to concentrate some nutrients and exclude others. This is where active transport comes in. Active transport requires energy or ATP. Active transport is like walking up an escalator that is going the wrong way. You have to spend energy to fight the gradient. Plants do this with Hydrogen, ATPase, pumps in the root cell membrane. These pumps use ATP, the energy exchange currency for all biology, to pump hydrogen ions out of the cell into the space outside of the cell. That creates a proton gradient. More hydrogen outside than inside. It also creates a charge difference. The inside of the cell becomes more negative. This allows for nutrient ions to be pulled into the cell. So oftentimes when your plant is taking up nutrients, it's happening through secondary active transport mechanisms that ultimately use energy in the form of ATP. You wanna add in this last layer and it's where things get a little bit complicated. It's all about carbon dynamics. Plants are pumping carbon into the root zone all of the time. They send out sugars, amino acids, organic acids, and phenolic compounds. And they do this to feed microbes that change the pH, solubilize nutrients, and chelate nutrient ions. You can think of root exudates as the plant's currency. The plant is literally paying microbes to do biochemical work for the plant. Carbon and the amount of organic matter and CEC is like the nutrient bank. Organic matter and clays in the soil are like the bank account that hold on to positively charged nutrient ions like calcium, magnesium, potassium, and ammonium. The storage mechanism is called cation exchange capacity. A good CEC means that when the solution gets a little bit low, the bank releases some of those nutrients back into the solution. Or if you dump a bunch of fertilizer, the bank can hold on to those nutrients until they're needed. And then we have chelation. Chelation is when an organic molecule wraps around a nutrient ion like a claw. When these nutrient ions are not chelated, they can precipitate out of solution, they can get stuck to soil particles, and they be can become unavailable. When they're chelated by organic acids, amino acids, humic and fulvic substances, they're more likely to stay in solution, move with water, and stay bioavailable near the root. So carbon-based inputs, organic matter, and healthy microbial communities don't just feed soil life in some vague way, they stabilize nutrients, smooth out the supply, and increase the efficiency of whatever nutrients you're already paying for. So the best way to support proper nutrient delivery, not just understand the science, but putting it in a practical application, there are a couple of things that you need to know. To support mass flow, you wanna have a dialed in vapor pressure deficit or VPD so that plants are actively transpiring. You wanna avoid constant cold, soggy media, and you also wanna manage your irrigation in a way that gives root hairs the best opportunity to grow and proliferate and absorb nutrients. Remember, no transpiration, no mass flow, 
no nutrient delivery. To protect diffusion, you wanna make sure to keep your media from swinging from bone dry to oversaturated conditions. Water management is key for diffusion and mass flow. You also wanna maintain good soil structure and avoid compaction so that way things like biofilms and water films can form and allow the transportation and diffusion of nutrient ions into the root. This is especially essential for phosphorus uptake because it is mainly observed through diffusion. When it comes to root inception, you want to prioritize oxygen in the root zone, soil, and media aeration, and avoid any EC levels that can cause osmotic stress and can damage fine root hairs. You also want to make sure to not let your roots sit in cold, stagnant conditions. And lastly, you want to feed that carbon engine. Build or maintain organic matter where possible. Use carbon-based amendments or humic and fulvic acid sources that integrate with biology and support microbial diverse communities, especially around the rhizosphere. You can think of carbon as something that upgrades the software of mass flow, diffusion, and root inception. And those are the things that are running your nutrient system.